In nome di Patris, Fili, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. In toribol ad altari Dei. Iudicum et Deus e scene causa meum de gentum non sancta ob omine iniquidoso eruime. E mitologium tuum, e veritatum tuum, ipsum edu duxerunt ed adu duxerunt e mantum sanctum tuum et in tabernacula tua. Confite voti bi citra Deus, Deus meus, quod et risis es anima mea, quod et conturbas me. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto. In toribo ad altari Dei. Aditorium nostrum in nomine Domini. Confitio Dio Omnipotenti, Beati Marie, Sempre Virgini, Beati Michele Arcangelo, Beati Ioni Baptiste, Sancti Sapostoli, Spirito a Paolo, Omnibus Sancti, Sepulbis Fratres, Qui e Pecavinimis, Cogitazioni per Poropere. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa, Idio Precor, Beati Marie, Sempre Virgini, Beati Michele Arcangelo, Beati Ioni Baptiste, Sanctus Apostolus Petrum et Paulum Omnes Sanctus Ebus Fratres, Adore Pa Mea Dominum Deum Nostrum. Amen. Miseriate vestri, omnipotens Deus, et divisis ficatis vestris, peducat vos ad vitam eternam. Indulgentium absolutionem ter emissionem peccatorum nostrorum, tribuat nobis omnipotens et misericos dominus. Deus tucum versus vivificabis nos. Ostene nobis domine misericordiam tuam. Domine exauri orationem eam. Dominus vobiscum, oremus. Dici Dominus, ego cogito, cogitationes pacis et non afflictionis, Invocabitis me et ego exaudium vos, et reducam captivitatum vestram, de cunctis lucis. Benedixisti Domini terram tuam, avetisti captivitatum Iacob. Gloria Patria, Filio et Spiritui Sancto. Sicurarat in principio, et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Dicit Dominus, ego cogito cogitationis pacis, et non afflictionis, invocabitis me, Et ego exaudium vos, et reducam captivitatem vestram de cunctis lucis. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax uminibus boni voluntatis, Laudamus Te, benedicimus Te, adoramus Te, glorificamus Te. Gratias agimus Tibi propte magnum gloriam Tuam, Domine Deus Rex Celestis, Deus Pater Omnipotens, Domine Fili Unigenite Iesu Christe, Domine Deus Agnus Dei, Filius Patris, qui tolis peccata mundi miserere nobis, qui tolis peccata mundi suscipi de peccationem nostrum, qui sedes ad exterem patris miserere nobis, quoniam tu solus sanctus, tu solus dominus, tu solus altissimus, Iesu Christe, cum sancto spiritu in gloria Dei patris. Amen. Dominus vobiscum. Oremus. 
absolvi quaesimus domini tuorum delicta populorum ut ac peccatorum nexibus, quae pro nostra fragilitate contraximus, tu benignitate liberimur. Per dominum nostrum, Iesum Christum, fidium tuum, qui te convivida et regna dignitate spiritu sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. <coughs> Oremos. Ad te nos, Domine Clementes, exeriet, eri serenitatem nobis tribue supplicantibus, u qui iuste propicatis nostris affligimur, misericordia tua preveniente clemenciam sensiamus. Er Dominum nostrum, Iesum Christum, fidium tuum, qui te convivit et regnat in unitate spiritus sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Alexio Episere Beati Pauli Apostoli Ad Filippenses. <coughs> Fratres imitatores me stote et observate eos qui ita ambulant, sicut habetis formam nostrum. Multi enim ambulant co sepe diceban vobis. Nunc autem afflans dico, inimicos crucis Christi, e quorum finis interitus, quorum Deus ventrest. Et gloria in confusione ipsorum qui terena sapiunt, nostra alta conversatio in celis est, unde etiam salvatorum expectamus, dominum nostrum Iesum Christum, qui reformabit corpus humilitatis nostri. Configuratum corpore claritatis sue, secundum operationem, qua etiam posit subicere sibi omnia. Itaque, fratres me carissimi et deseradissimi, gaudium meum et corona mea, sic stati in domino carissimi. Evodium rogo et sentican, deprecor et ipsum sapere in domino. Etiam rogo et te germani compar, adiuva ilas, quae mecum labora verunt in evangelio cum clemente, eceteris auditoribus meis, Ora momina sunt in libro vitae. Liberasti nos, Domini, ex affligentibus nos, et eos qui nos oderunt, confidisti. In Deo ladavimor tota die, et in nomine tua confitevimor in secula. Alleluia, alleluia. Te profundis clamavi a te, Domine, Domine ex auri orazione meam, alleluia. Dominus Fuviscum, Sequentia Sancti Evangelii Secundum Matteo. In illo tempore loquente Iesu ad turbas ece princeps unus accessit et adorabat eam dicens. Domine, filia, mea, modo defuncta est, se veni impune manum tuam super eam, e vivet. E surgens Iesu sequebatur eam et discipuli eus. Et ecim ulia, quae sanguinis fluxum patiabatur duod ecim anis accessit retro et tetigit fimbriam e vestimenti eus. Dicebat enim intra se si tetegero tantum vestimentum eus salvo ero. At Iesus conversus evidens eam dixit, confide filia, fides tua, te salvam fecit. Et salva facta es mulia ex illa ora, et cum veniset Iesus in domum principis, se vediset tu vicines, et turbam tumultuantem, dicebat, recedite, non es enim mortua puella, sed dormit. Et deridebant eum, et cum iecta eset turba, intravit et tenuit manum eus, et serexit puella, et exit fama hic in universam teram ilam.
The readings for the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. <clears throat> the epistle is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 3. Brethren, be followers of me, and observe them who walk as you have our model. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, <coughs> and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. But our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, who will reform the body of our lowliness, made like to the body of his glory, according to the operation whereby also he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and most desired, my joy and my crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beg of Evodia, I beseech Sintike, to be of one mind in the Lord, and I entreat thee also, my sincere companion, help those women who have labored with me in the gospel, with Clement and the rest of my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Please stand for the holy gospel. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is taken from St. Matthew, chapter 9. At that time, as Jesus was speaking to the multitudes, behold, a certain ruler came up, and adored him, saying, Lord, my daughter is even now dead, but come, lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus, rising up, followed him with his disciples. And behold, a woman who was troubled with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I shall touch his garment, only his garment, I shall be healed. But Jesus, turning and seeing her, said, Be of good heart, daughter. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Jesus was come into the house of the ruler and saw the minstrels and the multitude making a tumult, he said, <coughs> Give place, for the girl is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. And when the multitude was put forth, he went in and took her by the hand and the maid arose, and the fame thereof went abroad into all that country. Please be seated. <clears throat> Dear faithful, there are a few announcements for this Sunday. First of all, I offered the 6.30 Mass for the good health of Father Hawker. Father Hawker is not with us on this Sunday because he's in the hospital. He had a low blood count on Friday, so I took him to the emergency room and they admitted him to the hospital on Friday afternoon. He's undergone a few tests. I will be checking back with him soon today to see how he's doing. Unfortunately, we've had to play a bit of phone tag, so I do not have an update since Saturday when the doctor called me to tell me they were doing the procedures to check and see why he is losing this blood, why his blood count is low. So please pray for him nonetheless. Pray for his good health. And again, I offer the Mass, the first Mass of today for him. The 8 o'clock Mass was offered for a sister and the Dominicans of Avrier, France, the contemplatives. This Mass of 9.30 is offered for all of the parishioners of Our Lady of the Angels, all of those under my charge. And then this afternoon's Mass will be offered for the poor souls in purgatory. On the note of poor souls in purgatory, do not forget this is the last day of the octave, so you can still gain a plenary indulgence for the poor souls in purgatory. Remembering under the usual conditions, I remind you to make a good confession. You have a little more leeway than you do for other plenary indulgences. For the poor souls, you have 20 days before your good action for them, or good work, and 20 days after. So get your Confessions made soon, 
within the next few days to be able to secure these plenary indulgences for the poor souls. And of course, you know also, under the usual conditions, we pray for the intentions of the Supreme Pontiff, which are the prayers that he should be saying for the good of the church. We pray for the same in intentions. And then also, you want to be free from your venial sin. It's not just sufficient to have gone to confession. We must also be detached from our venial sin to gain the plenary indulgence, saying pretty much that, I do not want anything to do with these sins. Also, November 22nd, 29th, and December 6th, the first Sunday of December, we will have our Christmas boutique. Items are needed for a successful event. You've seen the flyers or posters in the vestibule. There's also a little flyer there for you to pick up if you need some ideas on what you might donate. New items or homemade items you may bring. So please check out those flyers and posters in the vestibule. I welcome all of you and I encourage you to donate from your homemade items, whatever they might be, or your new items. November 22nd, 29th, and December 6th. Next Sunday's 9.30 Mass will begin at 10 a.m. So take note of that, please, all of you who are here at this Mass. We are moving it back 30 minutes, so at the top of the hour, 10 o'clock, in order that we have more room in between the 8 o'clock Mass and the 10 o'clock Mass now for many things, not only to move traffic, through the parking lot and be able to secure that all of you can get into church on time, but also for catechism, because I need to be able to start catechism soon. We're already a month behind, and I want to be able to have a little more leeway for ap apostolic or apostolate between the masses. It may even allow some time for confessions. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Hail Mary, for the grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <clears throat> Sorry, for the Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. Dear faithful, we certainly need the help of the Blessed Virgin Mary. I like to invoke her at these sermons that our ears and eyes may be open at these ceremonies, especially our ears open for the sermon, even if our eyes close a little bit, like the man who used to wear sunglasses at the sermons. You couldn't tell whether you're sleeping or not. So keep your eyes and ears open for God's grace. And the theme of my sermon today is peace, peace of soul. It's a wonderful Latin word, pox, pox pacis. We always give the nominative of the Latin word and its genitive, pox pacis. Pox is a beautiful word. Our Lord uses it in the gospel many times. Pox tecum, pox vobiscum. And such like. John chapter 14, he says, This peace I give unto you. Well, first he says, I leave with you. This peace I leave with you, and then I give it unto you. Of course, not as the world gives. And then he says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid, or be not afraid. And that's why I thought it was important to bring up this peace sermon today, because it's very easy in today's environment, the machinations of the world today, the bizarreness of our country, what it's going through. It's very easy for Catholics, who I speak to today, for them to lose heart and be discouraged. And I don't want that to be the case. 
I want my flock to be strong. I want all Catholics to be strong. And you know by now, because you've lived your faith and you've studied it, you know that the devil's only overcome by supernatural helps. We can't do it ourselves. We can't do it by our own power. So we have to hold on to the supernatural, which means that all peace of soul strictly comes from God. That true peace of soul, that supernatural peace of soul, comes from the soul that's in the state of grace, that's united to its king, Jesus Christ, the king of kings. And if a soul keeps this vertical attachment, then everything else that it does, peace flows out from that. Is it really surprising to you that the world today, especially our dear United States, is so unpeaceful and unrestful? I don't think you really are surprised. Because how many years, how many years ago, how many years since, has it been detaching itself from Christ the King? None of us here like the fact that so many sins run rampant in our society all around us. In our towns, in our cities, in our homes, wherever, so many sins foisted, pushed into our faces. Yes, we commit enough ourselves, it's true. We are sinners. But so much is pushed right in our face. All of those sins crying to heaven for vengeance are crying to heaven for vengeance. And yet we're supposed to look at them, appreciate them, tolerate them, Yes, I know, the world is bad around us. We are not surprised, but don't be surprised by the unrest that follows. Because years ago, even I had a taste of this when I started to go against the norm just a little bit. And wow, did the surf, under the surface just fomented and came out the awfulness of society. You wouldn't believe that people would say and do things that before they were quiet, but given the right agitation, they came forth in all of their glorious scum. So in a way, you have to half expect that this is a good thing, that the bad is revealed. that the good may triumph. But that's not easy because we want to be caught up in the trap of losing our peace of soul. But you will not lose your peace of soul, dear faithful, if you keep the supernatural life, the spiritual life. You have to keep that connection with our Lord, keep the state of grace, stay in the state of grace. When I was on vacation, you know that I was absent. Well, part of my absence was to go to Albuquerque, New Mexico, to be present in the town of Grants, New Mexico, so that the mayor of the town, Mayor Hicks, could consecrate his town, not just through the priests that are of the town, but he himself, to do it rightly. He himself pronounced the consecration of his town to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and St. Joseph. He knelt before the altar that we had set up on which I had celebrated Mass at their request with the help of Father Purdy, 
one of my fellow classmates, when we entered in 1995 in the seminary, he, Father Purdy, drafted these texts for Mayor Hicks to read. He did so, made the consecration before the makeshift altar, and then he signed the declaration of the town, for the town, that said it was now consecrated. What hope that gives us. Unprecedented. We would hope that more towns would do the same. More governors would do the same. And maybe even our own president. And when I was talking to Mayor Hicks after the ceremony of Mass and this consecration, we were sitting down to eat. And he was sitting here next to me. He said, Father, I'm at peace. This morning I woke up before this Mass and I was at peace. Because before that he had been at such odds with the governor. He had received many thousands of dollars with the fines for just operating as a mayor in his own city, trying to keep, yes, some semblance of normalcy, having ceremonies for whatever he thought was best for the town, one of which he said he was going to do for the veterans. He had 700 veterans that had died that he was commemorating. And he was going to have a special celebration for them. But he was up against so much opposition from the terrible governor that I can imagine how his life was so agitated. And he, here he was going to take one more step to be in her face, do something that no one else had done yet. And he was willing to do it. He said he woke up and he had such peace of soul for the good work that he was going to do. And I want to remind all of you, dear faithful, there's a peace of soul, something that's given to us that we cannot acquire on our own. We only find it, we only feel it, we only hold on to it when we do the good works for Christ the King. Regardless of what everybody says. There's a peace you just can't equal. And it's that very peace that he told us that he would give us in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 14. Peace I leave unto you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. Be not troubled. Let not your hearts be troubled. Be not afraid. We should not be afraid to practice our faith but beware, and this is where, again, I counsel you, dear faithful, do not fall into the trap of the enemy. The enemy wants you to be agitated. The enemy wants you to lose faith, hope, and charity. He doesn't care who you are, old or young, Democrat or Republican. He wants you to lose your faith. He wants you to lose your hope. He wants you to con concede. He wants you to whatever in order that he can catch all of us. I have no doubt the devil is going about the world today seeking out those souls who present the worst opposition to him. Those who are on their way to hell, so be it. He just lets them go. They, they need no help from him. But for those who stand up for Christ the King, for the faith, for doctrine, for morals, oh, he's ramping up hard against them. He has to. It reminds me of the story of Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre. The dear Archbishop stood in the face of this huge monster of change. And boy, did they call him black. Blackened his name, blackened his character, made him just the pariah. Look at the old newspaper articles. 
about the archbishop. Archbishop rebels against the church. Archbishop does this. Archbishop does that against this great Catholic church. Who does he think he is? Well, expect to suffer if you're going to stand up against this huge monster of progressivism, modernism, liberalism, communism, socialism. What's the option? To give in? Some people will say, I want to keep my peace, therefore I'm going to give in. Now I'm telling you that you can keep your peace of soul no matter what happens, no matter what kind of stew of confusion and frustration is under you, hold on to your supernatural peace of soul. That's what's genuine. That is what is of our Lord. The peace of this life, many men have tried to negotiate for it. It's only temporary. It can pass so quick. Many of us feel only peaceful when we're consoled, pampered in our spiritual, mental, and physical life. Then we can do anything, right? But again, you're centering on your own ability. And we need to get past that. Yes, we'd like everything to be peaceful in our life, economically, politically, spiritually, in the church. That's very nice. We all should still fight for that. But I tell you, that's not the peace that our Lord is wishing to give us. It's a supernatural peace that no one can take away. No one. We have to let it go. Keep the supernatural peace that comes through the state of grace. You've heard me say, you've heard priests say, go to confession. Go to the sacraments. Why? Because then you keep this connection with God and nobody can run you over. Nobody can sway you. Left or right. Because you know where you're going. You know who you are. Recently, our Superior General, Dom Davide, wrote a very excellent letter on the occasion of the 50th anniversary. You can find this letter online. And he says, the object of the ultimate raison d'etre of all of our battles is the life of an intimate union with Christ the King. Are we working for that? So really, strictly, it's a spiritual battle, an interior battle of each individual. Yes, it extends out. We'd hope it extends out. We hope it touches everything. I told you this peace needs to come from our Lord into society, but through our souls. And this life of intimate union with our blessed Lord, our King, is achieved by fighting, persevering, keeping the state of grace, and of course, prayer. So his whole letter ultimately can be summed up into perfecting our spiritual life. After 50 years of the Society of St. Pius X's existence, there's been a lot accomplished for the good of the church. But how are we going to persevere? How are we going to stand up for the next 50 years if not through a real solid adherence to Christ the King and a good, strong spiritual life? You can read that letter. I wish I had more time to go over it with you, but of course, with all of my duties and masses to say, I cannot go through the whole thing. He will address a few questions. Must the society be militant? What is the spiritual life? What are the necessary means for the spiritual life? Has modern man abandoned himself to, without reference points to anything? What is the root crisis in the church? And it's the spirit of the world that's come in. We saw it at Vatican II. We saw it even a little bit before. 
And it's been a constant battle since the pious, time of Pius X against the modernism, modernists. It has become almost impossible in today's church to know our Lord Jesus Christ fully and truly and to live the spiritual life that flows from it. Is that something that a priest or a bishop would want? To make it so difficult for a soul to know Jesus Christ and to truly love him? No, that doesn't sound like the direction or desire of a good priest or bishop. That sounds like someone who would want to fight against Christ the King. And who is this that fights against Christ the King? We know who he is. It's the devil himself and all of his henchmen. He wants it, the spirit of the world, to enter the church, to enter our families, to enter our souls, so that we miss going to heaven. And that collateral damage will be great. Think of just one man, one man who does not follow Christ the King, one man who does not guide his family in the spiritual life and doesn't care about his spiritual life. Think of the collateral damage all around. And then think on a higher level if one priest doesn't even care, or a bishop, or a pope. Look at the collateral damage. It's amazing. And then what we've seen also in this world that the Superior General will bring up is this blunted sword of the gospel. How could the Catholic Church come to this catastrophic situation? How is it possible that such an about turn could have taken place? And again, he brings it back to a very simple reason. The spiritual life of which we have spoken is the cause of a fight. This battle, which is that of each soul in particular wanting to develop the reign of Christ within it, is also and first and foremost the battle of the whole Catholic Church. <laughs> I know some of you have seen my catechism classes. I know some of you have studied your traditional catechism. I know that some of you have studied the traditional sacraments and know the difference between the traditional sacraments and the new sacraments. I'll just call them that. Which one do you think helps us to love Christ the King, to love the church, and to look after the spiritual life? I think it's quite clear. I think it's quite clear which one propels you towards Christ, propels you towards God, towards heaven. There's not a thing in the church today that hasn't been touched to water it down, to make it a little more ambiguous, to make it more digestible. This has been going on for a while. Now we experience this upsurge of just grossness in society. Is it a battle you want to engage in? Or would you rather run away and keep your, your peace of soul? No, I say we fight. And we keep our peace of soul. We don't become angry unreasonably or irrationally. We don't start hating anyone. We don't become violent. There's no need for that. If you stand with Our Lady, if you stand with Our Lord, if you stand with the angels, they can do incredible things without even touching anyone. So I say, watch out for the devil of disorder, the devil of pride, the devil that wars against our peace of soul. And even in the epistle of today, you have those fine words of St. Paul when he speaks to the Philippians. He says, for many walk of whom I've told you often 
and now tell you weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. We would not want to be an enemy of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. It's not us. Do you find yourself like an alien then in this world? So be it. Catholics are much higher, much further above the the things of this life. We are wayfarers like aliens in this world where we're attacked by the flesh and the devil. So my ultimate goal today of this sermon is to to remind you to watch out for the pitfalls. Don't become like the enemy. Keep your peace of soul. Read the letter of the Superior General, since I cannot read all of it to you. And then lastly, I want to say that we have a few of us, quite a few of you here have been on Ignatian retreats before. Remember the principles of St. Ignatius? his discernment of spirits. He says, when we're in a moment of desolation, don't make a change. And that's exactly what the Archbishop didn't like about Vatican II. He himself was not about making a lot of changes at Vatican II, or possibly even holding the council as it was to be held, because he was afraid that going into the situation, we would be undermined, and we were church was. He knew certain things had to be done for the betterment of souls, a type of reform for the good. But he was afraid of opening up a can of worms that would let in so much and then have the atrocities that we have today. So watch out. Think about those desolations that you have Don't react to them and start changing things irrationally, crassly. Not with violence and not with anger and hate. Remember that anger is a passion that we all have. God gave it to us. It's one of the 11 in our souls. I think of a man, a Catholic man of his home, who may have to be angry with his wife to correct her with his children to correct them. And that can be very good, but not done irrationally. Anger is a good thing to be used in the proper way, to overcome an obstacle that keeps me from the good, but not use irrationally, violently. We need to know when to use the anger to correct and then to pull back and not hold on to it. That's virtue. You have to have practice a lot of virtue. Because anger is one of those fomenting passions like lust that can just run away with you. You have to know how to use it properly. So, using the anger that is proper to us, we fight against evil, against the bad, but we keep our peace of soul knowing that our Lord, Christ the King, is always in charge. He doesn't somehow let go of his power. Okay, I don't want to do this anymore. No, he never will. It's a question of all of us conforming to that. So keep your peace of soul. Pray to Our Lady, Our Lady of the Angels, our patroness. She has looked after our parish in so many different ways. She will continue to do so. The very fact that you're in the church right now with the Mass, being able to pray, is something that I desire for all of you because I saw how much pressure mentally, spiritually you're going through, this yo-yo of going in and out of the church and the, the troubles of this state. No more. <laughs> I make a joke of it, but if I had to go to prison so that you keep your peace, then so be it. You need the sacraments. You need your temple to pray in. You need God You can't do it without him. So that's why I do what I do. Even if it seems like I'm contrary to the law. 
because there's a higher law, there's a higher need. People are losing their minds all around us because they don't have God. And how are we going to maintain our peace if not through Him? So pray well to Our Lady of the Angels that we may continue, regardless of Father being in prison or regardless of fines. And I thank you very much for those who have donated. We're, <laughs> we're doing better than we were before the fines. Thank you very much for your generosity. Let us pray well at this Mass. This Mass is offered for all of you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Credo in unum Deum, potum omnipotentem factorem celi et terre visibilium omnium visibilium, et in unum Dominum Iesum Christum filium Deo unigenitum, et ex patri notum anti omnia saecula, Deum de Deo, lumen de lumine, Deum verum de Deo vero, genitum non factum consubstantial in patri, precum omnia facta sunt, qui potum nos homines et proptum nostrum salutem descendit de celis. Et incarnatus est de Spiritus Sancto ex Maria Virgine, et homo factus est. Crucifix usit simper nobis subantia Pilato passus et sepultus est, et resurrexit tertia dies, econem scripturas, et ascenit in celum, sed ad exterem patris. Et ito neventurus est cum gloria iudicari vivos et motuos, cuius regni non erit finis. Et in Spiritum Sanctum Dominum et vivificantem, Qui ex patri filio qui procedit, qui con patri filio sim adoratur con glorificatur, qui locutus es per profetas. Et unam sanctam catholicam et apostolicam ecclesiam, confitio unam baptisma in remissionem peccatorum, et expecto resurrectionem autuorum, et vitam venturi seculi. Amen. Dominus vobis cum. Oremos. De profundis clamaviate Domine, Domine ex audi orationem meam. De profundis clamaviate Domine.
Roti fratre sut mea maquestrum, circovicia maquitobide, fiat deum patrum omnipotentum. Amen. Per omnia secula seculorum, Dominus vobiscum, sursum corda, gratia segamus Domino Deo nostru. Per edignum et ius domesticum et salutari nos tibi semper, ubique gratia sagere Domini Sancti Pater Omnipotens Eterni Deus. Qui comunigenito filio tuo, et spiritus sancto, unus est Deus, unus est Dominus, non in unius singularitati personae, sed in unius trinitati substantiae. Quod enim de tua gloria revelante te credimus, hoc de filio tuo, hoc de spiritus sancto, sine differentia discretione sentimus. Ud in confessione veri sempre teneque de etatis in personis proprietas in essentia unitas, Ere maestati adoretur equalitas, quam laudent angeli, atque ac angeli, cerevim quoque ac serefim, qui nances anclamari codidie, una voce dicentes. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus abo, plenis uncelia terra, gloria tua, osana in excelsis, benedictus qui venit, nomine Domini, osana in excelsis.
No viss, kaut ko tikai to arī būs. Ir omnijā sekulā sekulore. Oremos. Preceptis auditoribus moniti et vini institucioni formati aurimus ticere. Pauta nostre, qui es in ceri sanctificet un nomen tuum. Ar veni auto reignum tuum, fiat voluntas tuo, sicur in cielo et in terra. Panem nostrum, cor irian in reno visorie, et dimite nobis vita nostra, sicur et nos dimitimus tepeditoribus nostris. In eno sinducas in tentationem. Amen. Per omnia secula seculorum, pax domini sit semper voviscum. Agnus te, qui tolis peccat mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus te, qui tolis peccat mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus te, qui tolis peccat mundi. Dona nobis pacem. Domine non sendinius. Domine non sendinius. Domine non sendinius. Corpus Domine nostri, Iesu Christi, in custodia.
Misuriate vestri, omnipotens Deus, et dimisis picatis vestris, peducat vos ad vitem eternum. Indulgentium absolutionem et remissionem peccatorum vestorum, tui per vobis omnipotens et misericos dominus. Amen. Et cianius te, et scritori peccatum mundi, Domine non sem dinius, et utum tera subtertum meum, sit tantum diva vots in abitur animo mea. Domine non sem dinius, et utum tera subtertum meum, sit tantum diva vots in abitur animo mea. Domine non sem dinius, et utum tera subtertum meum, sit tantum diva vots in abitur animo mea.
Amen dico vobis, qui quid orantes petitis crediti, qui accipietis, et fiat vobis. <coughs> Dominus vobis cum. Oremos. Quesimus omnipotens Deus, ut quos divina tribuis participatione gaudere, emanis non sina si viacere perculis. Per hominem nostrum, Iesum Christum, fidium tuum, qui te convivit et reignat in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Oremos. Quesimus omnipotens Deus, clemenciam tuam, Ut unendantiam quercias imbrium et heleritatem vultus tui nobis impetire digneris. Per dominem nostrum, Iesum Christum, fidium tuum, qui te convivit et reignat in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. <coughs> Dominus, Vobiscum. Ite misa est. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Dominus vobiscum. Initium Sancti Evangelii secundum Ioannem. In principio erat verbum, et verbum erat apodeum, <coughs> Deus erat verbum, hoc erat in principio apodeum. Omnia priipsum facta sunt, et sinus factum est nico quod factum est. In ipsa vita erat, et vita erat lux hominum, et lux in tenebrae sucet, et tenebrae eam non comprehenderunt. Fuit o misus a Deo, coi nomen erat Ioannus, si venit in testimonium, et testimonium prohibitet de lumine, ut omnes crederunt pri illum. Non erat ille lux, et ut testimonium prohibitet de lumine. Erat lux vera quae eliminat omnem hominem veniantum in hunc mundum. E mundo erat, e mundo spirus in factus est, e mundus eam non cunovit. En brevi venit, e sui eam non receperunt, cocorat e merceperunt eum, dedit eis protestat in filius de fieri, His quae credunt in nomine eus, <coughs> qui non ex sanguinibus, neque ex fondati carnis, neque ex fondati viris, sed ex deonati sunt. Et verbum caro factum est. Et habitavit in nobis, et vidimus gloriam eus, gloriam quasi in genitia patriae, plenum gratiae, et veritatis. <coughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <clears throat> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. <coughs> blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <coughs> Hail, Holy Queen. Our life from Sweden, and our hope. To thee to be cry, we banish children of Eve. To thee to be sent up by signs, morning weeping in valley of tears. Then thy most gracious advocate, then I have mercy towards us. And after this, our exile is shown to us at this fruit. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. <coughs> Let us pray. O God, who represent our strength, look down in favor upon thy people who cry to thee. And through the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of Saint Joseph, her spouse, of the blessed apostles Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of Holy Mother of the Church, through the same Christ our Lord. St. Michael, the Archangel, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. 
And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Most sacred heart of Jesus, most sacred heart of Jesus, most sacred heart of Jesus, sorrowful and immaculate heart of Mary,